once again welcome to the little chapel here in Bishop's House where I am speaking to you about Advent. I have to confess to you that the season of Advent is my favourite season in the church's year. And of course it's often crowded out, isn't it, by so many festive events that we get caught up with. But this year, with the pandemic, things are very different. And it is as though we are going out into the desert with the prophets, with John the Baptist, with Our Lady, in order to experience what Advent means. The word, of course, uh, is derived from the Latin word for coming, Adventus. We are reflecting upon the coming of Jesus. And as so much of the liturgy during this season puts it, we are waiting in expectant hope. And I think those three words, waiting, expectant and hope, sum up so much of what our meditation during Advent might be. So first of all, let's think about the idea of waiting. I don't know about you, but I have to confess too, a lot of confessing in this little meditation, I have to confess that I'm not a very patient person at times, and I can get very impatient, especially when I'm waiting in the queue uh, to pay at the supermarket, or if I'm waiting for a train to come and it's been delayed. In fact, I think about waiting for something like a bus or a train, and often I think about a collection of people who are not exactly a community, but are just joined together by that business of waiting for the train to arrive. So although there might be a number of people in the bus queue or a number of people scattered around the uh, railway station platform, they are not exactly waiting together as a community. And that's a big difference between our Advent waiting and waiting, say, for a train. We are waiting within a community. We are gathered together, as it were, to wait for God to fulfill his promises. And of course, there are other kinds of waiting. I'm sure many of us have had the experience of waiting for our exam results to be produced. We wait, perhaps not in expectant hope, but almost in, in dread, wondering whether we've passed the wretched thing and can move on to the next stage in, in our education or our life. Then there is the kind of waiting that we have where we are uh, awaiting test results from medical examinations. That's a very different kind of waiting, isn't it? And we realise uh, when we get the result and we get the all clear that suddenly life is very different. A great cloud has lifted from us and the waiting uh, is soon forgotten. St Paul uses the image of waiting. He suggests in the letter to the Romans that the whole of creation is waiting with longing for God to reveal his purposes. And he suggests this is the kind of waiting that a pregnant woman has when she is waiting to give birth to a child. So I suppose there is something of all those kind of waitings in our thinking about waiting for the coming of Christ. Maybe we're not waiting at all for Jesus to return again in glory at the end of time. Maybe we think Jesus' one coming 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem was enough to keep us going and why do we need to await something else? I think the Advent season is framed within salvation history and our understanding of what it means to be a people of faith who are hanging on every word that God has spoken to us. 
I'm sure like me, each of you has his or her own favorite words from the scriptures, words that we turn to time and time again. But we need to move to a point where we can hear God's word in its entirety, where every word is like a precious gift that we have received and we receive with, with a great sense of joy and a great sense of wanting to know what that word is communicating to us. And that gives us a sense of what expectant hope is all about. When I read the words of the prophets, I am astounded by their faith and expectation of God's promises. They, they are not at all laid back about sharing with us the longing and yearning of their hearts that God would deliver on what he has promised his people. And so that should be for us. I know that quite often my mind is distracted and my feelings begin to become quite subdued and dominated by all sorts of fears and anxieties uh, and I wonder what's around the corner and then I listen to this voice and the next one and I begin to think to myself, what's all that about? And that's when I need to remind myself, usually in the prayer of praise and adoration, where I praise God, uh, sometimes out loud. I have to look around and be careful there's no one else around when I'm doing that, otherwise they might wonder what's going on. But I, I like to praise God for what God has done and what God is going to do. It makes it more real to me. It makes it more tangible that when I praise God for what the Lord has already done in salvation history, then I can be sure that I am waiting in expectant hope and not that kind of indifferent, take it or leave it approach that so often marks our waiting. So let's turn to the Lord now and let's ask him to be with us in this time of Advent waiting. Lord Jesus, we believe that you have already come amongst us, that you, the eternal word of God, was made flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary. We ask you to be with us now because you come to us now in the mass and in the sacraments. And we wait with eager longing for you to come again at the end of time. We wait patiently, but we wait with expectation that you will come and that you will deliver what you have promised you would bring. So help us to wait with that same longing of the prophets and with that eagerness to welcome you when you do come into our lives and fulfill all that has been promised to us. Amen. Mm -hmm.